shovel for the Chinese menu in his hand Walking through the streets of Soho in the rain He was looking for a place called Lee Hoon Gonna get a big dish of beef chow mein Hey, how you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. What a tune this is. I've loved this since I was a teenager. I've got no idea how I first encountered it. But uh, when I moved to London, one of the highlights for me uh, was going to have dinner at Lee Ho Fook, which is in Chinatown in London. You can go to the restaurant that he name checks in the song. I think that's a really cool little thing. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the chords, the basic chords. Uh, but I'm also going to show you kind of how to emulate the piano part a bit there with the little... The... Uh, we're not going to go too much into the specific guitar parts. They are the same chords. He's playing a little uh, using chips. Uh, it is Waddy Watchtel, a uh, fantastic guitar player. Uh, I knew him as being the guy in the expensive winos with Keith Richards, but like incredible guitar player, beautiful uh, slide thing with harmony parts. Uh, definitely recommend it if you're getting into the slide thing. But today we're going to be keeping it cool and just looking at the, uh, the, the framework of the song. So the most basic version will be two beats on the D, two beats on the C, and four on the G. Two, three, four. And you can totally play the song with just simple chords like this. You see this? Keeping the strumming a bit simple at the moment. But you don't have to go through the whole riff thing. If you're a beginner, you can learn this tune just with these chords. And it's a cool, fun tune. So get that right first of all. If you want to jazz the rhythm up a little bit, if you think... be a kind of a basic beginner's pattern but I think it becomes a lot more cool when you add in the kind of the piano emulation uh, part there so we're starting off with a D chord but we're not using the second finger so open fourth string second fret third string third fret on the second string fingers one and three but then we're adding little finger down the fourth fret of the third string and then lifting it off immediately so playing it one and two to D6 it's the same note that you'd add for like if you're doing like a rock and roll shuffle. But here we start with it on and take it off. One and two. Now it's actually the same harmonic trick on the C. Actually what I'd recommend is that you put your first finger where your second finger was. Might feel a little bit odd to start off with but give it a go. And then this finger here, the second finger is going to go down on the second fret of the third string and then lift off. So you end up with this. Okay. Now you could, in theory, finger it with the first finger. So moving just like starting from a regular C, moving first finger over. That's kind of okay too. In fact, you could leave it down. That just feels wrong to me. There's something about that having the second finger underneath. Uh, sorry, the first finger underneath, second finger there, it just doesn't feel right. For me, it's a lot easier to do it that way. Uh, I know like James Taylor often plays with the first finger underneath the second, and he's one of the finest guitar players to ever grace the planet. So I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'd find the one that feels more comfortable for you. But as a starting point, I'd recommend using third finger, first finger, and second finger is the one that lifts off. Now, it's also important there that you try and just target those three strings. Don't strum doesn't sound right when you're strumming all the strings so you're trying to do like little picks we'll go through and we'll talk about the picking hand in a little bit more detail in just a sec because that that's part part of the game for doing this kind of riff and making it sound good is, is as much of the picking as it is the chord so so we got one and two three and four one and two now this is a G again it's that same pattern like again this is at moving the fifth of the chord to the sixth it's this same as you now in this particular case really important third finger is playing the third fret thicker string and muting the fifth string and then you're playing the middle two strings and that's where second finger is going one and two and 
So we're playing this together. Then here at the end, hammer on the second finger from the open A string, and then either just the fourth string or those two together. I want to go over and take a little bit more of a look at the picking hand because that is where a lot of the accuracy of that hand is what's going to make it really feel right or not. You want to start by getting the left hand fingering sorted out first. I don't think trying to learn the two things at once is usually a good idea on occasions, not in this particular example. So just try and get it used all down picks to start off with. Just get it right and then uh, let's get into a bit more of the minute eye on the picking hand. So these first two picks, nice, you can see that I'm picking quite aggressively, but it is just these three strings. The thinner string is muted by the underneath of my uh, first and third fingers, so I don't have to worry too much about that. It's a down pick, so I'm accurately picking from the fourth string. Then we go to the C. Now here, I'm, I'm kind of picking out. So the, the direction of travel is kind of away. And I'm just figuring, I don't want to hit that note, I just did it then. Look at this other little screen here, trying to figure out if you're able to see what I'm doing. It's kind of this, I'm not getting that third string as much, because I don't want to hit this B string. If, I, you can, if you do hit the B string, it's not like it sounds out of tune, it's just like, it's just not the right flavor. So you're going to get used to these. You want it just enough, and that's just a practice thing going. Now here. Here. I'm not hitting the finger string. Yeah, I'm doing strum. Then just the middle two strings. Again, we're on the G chord now. It doesn't really matter if you hit that B string there. Then bass, middle strings. And then the little uh, uh, open A string, second fret hammer, middle strings. the whole story it's most of the story and it's where you should start is aiming for a bit of pick accuracy particularly on the chords where there's just the three strings that the uh, D and particularly the C chord is the hard one not to hit the B string but there's also a bit of a feel thing going on here that even when I'm not playing so my hand still wants to keep going one and two it, even if it's not always making a big obvious movement I'm feeling the movement. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky to understand. So I'm kind of now, I'm doing it deliberately, but down, 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 If you're doing that, if you keep that hand moving and you keep that feeling going, you can start to add in other pick notes and they might end up being what I'd refer to as like a ghosted note where the note's not real super loud, it's there, but it's actually kind of quiet. The, you might just get these little... And 
that's where you can start to try and feel into the groove a little bit there. It isn't just the, it's the getting it, the notes right is obviously an important part of it. But once you're beyond that, it's trying to get that, it's almost like a feeling like your hand is dancing, a continuous movement of the hand. But it's not always going to be a big obvious thing like you get with strumming. With these kind of things, it's a little bit more subtle. So subtle, in fact, that the hand might not physically be moving. You just feel, you feel like it is. And that allows you to do those little extra strums or da -da 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 -da. you know, there might be a little, it's just a little, a little dick -a -dick -dick. there. I'm not even saying that you have to do that or that you should do that. It's just an option. And it's one of the things that if you keep your hand moving all the time, it kind of opens the availability of those things to happen because you're feeling it all the time. And if you put in an extra strum or leave some out, it doesn't matter because you're going to be happy and confident with your own time. And that is one of those key things when you play in a tune like this, especially if you want to get a bit of a groove on, let alone sing. As soon as you want to sing as well, you have to make sure that all of that's automated enough that you can start to think about the vocals as well. So that's not without its challenges either. This one's not particularly difficult on that front, I think, and especially because it repeats through pretty much through the whole song, the same thing uh, you could be actually that is one thing to mention uh, if you did it exactly the same all of the way through the whole song it would probably get a little bit boring so do vary it up if you're playing it like uh, you maybe you play it this way exact way for the first verse and the first chorus and then drop it down and just play the chords uh, or somehow explore the way that using the dynamics so it's got some parts that are built up and some parts are quieter just to keep it interesting for anyone who happens to be listening to you um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did learning it this morning. I mean, it's just like, I had never learned to play it before. It's funny, like I've loved this song for years and just not got around to it. If you haven't checked it out already, do go and check out my beginner song course app where there are hundreds of songs specifically suited for beginners in a kind of guitar karaoke play along thing, along with all of the lessons on my beginner course. So if you get stuck on something, there's lessons there to help you. But the playing along with the karaoke thing is just tons and tons of fun. It's like real singers and it's, yeah, it, it's, if you're learning guitar, you're not going to find a better system to accelerate your journey. So do go and check it out if you haven't already. Have yourselves a fantastic day and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You'll take care. Bye-bye.